experience wants you to become an excellence university student. So we've made lots of short videos on topics that will help you improve your academic performance. If I take notes now, I can, I'll be able to remember what the lecture told me in class. University is different from school because you now have to deal with a much bigger volume of content. Don't despair. Good note-taking is a skill that can be mastered easily. One of the popular ones that we've adopted is the Cornell system of note-taking that is designed to assist undergraduate students and it covers issues around classroom note-taking or even revision. The key principles of the Cornell note-taking systems are that one, it tells you what kind of note you are taking the topic, two, it gives you referential details around the notes, that is, the date, the time. Three, it categorizes the elements of the notes that you are taking. And finally, it gives you a summary, that is a space where you, as taking down those notes, can recapture what you have understood. To take notes successfully, you must pay attention to the following key criteria. One, you must be focused on what you want to take notes on. Two, you must understand the importance of what you are taking that notes for. I am very good in writing and I enjoy my writing uh, rather than typing down my notes. Uh, but uh, I must say that the volume of, of work that we have in class is quite big and that requires me to actually use abbreviations. Um, that's basically, I'm coming to the style of how I'm yes. taking my notes, I believe. I don't necessarily use paragraphs and notes yes. and just, um, so I, Put graphics, I use diagrams, I use whichever way that works for me. You have to understand what is being taught. Okay. Uh, you can't just cram everything yes. because that's what tertiary, tertiary education is all about. Yeah. You have to understand the work. Uh, so you have to understand and be able to explain your, in your own words what you understand what is about what has been taught in class. So which is absolutely the way I prefer to work with. So it's also important to prepare your mind and you do your own summaries just before you go to class. It's important. Read for yourself, do your own summary, then you go and attend the class. And you sit right in front so that you get more understanding of what has been said. When I was a student, I used to believe a lot in mind map. It helps you to create a framework in your mind the bigger issues, what are the sub-themes of the bigger issue. It helps you to remember things, how they flow. What is an essay? It's a piece of structured writing around a topic. It usually presents a thesis or opinion and then support it with evidence and references from other academic writing. Writing essays is a big part of your academic life. Think of your essay as a giant hamburger. The bun, sliced in half, is your introduction and conclusion. Similar but not identical, and holding the rest of the hamburger together. Inside are layers, sections or paragraphs, each distinct and serving a particular purpose but all adding up to the whole. To know what is expected of you in an essay, you must read the assignment brief very carefully. If you are unsure what is expected of you, speak to a tutor or lecturer to get clarity. You should put the best efforts in and recognize that someone else took the time out in writing that piece of work. There are standard ways of organizing this information, no matter what source you are acknowledging. You may be using books, articles, reports, and even interviews with people to source the information and ideas. Now I learned that it needs to be throughout your essay, and with the computer it makes it easy because you have like different websites you can go to that helps you. I used to struggle, not anymore, because I'm getting good at it. When you're writing a piece of academic work, you'll be researching and reading a lot of work done by others to help you formulate your ideas and arguments. You need to acknowledge where you found the information, not only because it is fair to give credit to the person whose hard work you're using, but also to avoid plagiarism. When using the Harvard referencing system, there are two stages to highlighting other people's work in your own. Citing and referencing. Citing, or a citation, is what you do in the text of your essay, where you highlight words and ideas you've incorporated from somebody else's work. 
Referencing is where you put all the details of the source of the information that you've used at the end of your work in a separate section. Plagiarism is basically copy and paste, writing stuff that are not really your thoughts. You're going to have to do a whole lot of research. That's reading and note-taking. And then you're going to have to do a lot of writing. That's essays, reports, assignments, in order to show that you understand and you've gained some knowledge. But what happens when you use your reading and note-taking in your assignment without acknowledging the source? Well, that's kind of considered as stealing someone else's work. And that is plagiarism. So there are two ways the plagiarism can occur. The first one is when the ideas of one are presented by another as their own. And the second one is when their actual words are used. Now, when researching on the internet, we all know how easy it is to copy and paste. And that can be very tempting, you know, copying the relevant thought into your own document. But if you do this without acknowledging the source, then you are a plagiarist. Now, plagiarism is not only illegal, but it is also morally wrong, especially in a place of higher learning, because it's a serious no, no. Welcome to this video tutorial that will provide you with all the hints and tips that you need to make sure that you ace your exams. Here are five tips to make the best use of your study sessions. Number one, establish a timetable so you know what you are studying when and for how long. Number two, organize your study area. Make sure that the place where you're studying is quiet, well lit, and free of distractions and clutter. Take breaks every hour or so. Giving yourself a break for a few minutes will help to ensure that your concentration levels are maintained. Avoid procrastination and interruptions by turning your data off or just leaving your phone on silent. Make sure that you have some healthy snacks like fruit to eat while you study, as well as water to drink. This will help keep you fed and hydrated, as well as provide you with energy so you can concentrate on your studying. Preparation is all about knowing what to expect when you walk into the exam. Make sure you know what kind of exam it will be, so you don't get any nasty surprises. Remember, when it's exam time, it's better to be an hour early rather than 10 minutes late. And finally, it's time to actually begin writing. When your exam begins, spend some time reading through the paper to make sure you understand properly what is being asked. Leave yourself some time at the end of the exam to go over your answers one final time and ensure that you've answered them as effectively as possible. Remember, also make use of the student learning unit at the Fundani Center to get face-to-face -face support. Enjoy being an excellent student.